Welcome to the channel everyone. Today we're going to do some trailer maintenance. First we're going to start by changing the brake pads and then we're going to flush out the brake fluid. Let's get started. Okay, first things first, we gotta take this trailer and we gotta level it out the best we can. Take a jack and put it underneath the trailer frame just to lift it a little bit to give support. Then we're going to break the nuts loose on the tire while it's still on the ground. This will give the tire holding power as we break them loose. Now raise the jacks high enough so that the wheel spins and put your stands underneath the trailer frame. Lower the jack so that it's resting on the stands and the tire still spins freely. With these brakes, you can either use a half inch socket or a 5 16 hex bit to remove the slide bolts. Wiggle the caliper back and forth off the rotor and place it on a spare jack stand to keep the tension off the brake line. Use a big pair of pliers to bend the steel tabs so that the pad can be removed. Take a look at these pads. They've been on the trailer for two years. One of them is perfectly fine, but the other one had the pad completely fall off the backing plate. I'm going to take advantage of having everything apart and brush off the rust and spray it down with some corrosion inhibitor. You can use your thumbs to gently push these two sleeves flush. Using an old brake pad and a giant C-clamp, slowly compress the piston back into the caliper. I can't emphasize this enough, slowly. You're forcing the brake fluid back through the lines and into the reservoir. You don't want to blow a line or the piston seal. Before we spray it down, mask off all the rubber parts with some painter's tape. For this project, I use CRC's heavy duty corrosion inhibitor. Not only will it protect the metal that's there, but it will prevent the rust from getting worse. In this box, we get our brand new stainless steel back brake pads. Let's get everything ready and put them on. I sprayed a little white lithium grease on this metal tab here to prevent any chance of squeaking. We're gonna bend these uh, once they're on. Slide the caliper back onto the rotor while holding the pads in place. Spray white lithium grease on the slide bolts. Put a little blue Loctite on the threads to prevent them from backing out. When you reinsert the bolts into the holes, hand tighten and feel for the bolt to grab the threads. You can use your socket wrench to snug up the bolts, but then finish it off with a torque wrench set to 30 pound-feet of torque. Now since these are stainless brake pads, these tabs are not going to bend so easily, so do the best you can. That's it! Put the tire back on and get the lug nuts snug. Raise the trailer, remove the stands, and lower the jack so that the tire grips the pavement but not bearing all the trailer weight. These lugs get set between 90 to 120 pound-feet of torque. I set mine to 100. Okay. 
All right, the brakes are all finished. Let's go bleed those brake lines. Check your trailer manual and find out which brake fluid you'll need. But what's the difference of each? It all comes down to boiling points. DOT4 has a higher boiling point than DOT3 and is rated for heavier duty applications. You'll see DOT5 on the shelf, but do not use it unless specifically required by the trailer manufacturer. It's silicone based and can cause the seals to swell and bind caliper pistons. DOT3 and DOT4 are compatible to mix with each other if you can't find the right one on the shelf. I grabbed the moisture tester from Amazon to see what percentage of water is in my brake fluid. Now you're supposed to change your brake fluid every two years. Let's see why. That's why. We need the tongue of the trailer pitched down so that the air bubbles flow up towards the brakes when we bleed them. When pitched correctly, the bubble will be towards the back. The Kodiak 225 brake caliper has two bleed valves. Use the top one because air always wants to travel up. You'll need a 5 16 inch wrench to open the top of the valve and a 7 16 wrench to hold the bottom near the caliper. So I went to Harbor Freight and I got this brake bleeder and vacuum pump kit so I can do this by myself. It didn't work very well as you can see here. It doesn't make a great seal and when you pull vacuum it just sucks air around the fitting. So go grab a friend to help you with this. Find an old water bottle and fill it halfway up with water. When you insert your tube later make sure it goes all the way to the bottom. This will create a vacuum seal. Start at the coupler and follow the brake line through the trailer. Begin at the caliper that's the furthest on the system. I have a quarter inch tubing that just fits over the top of the valve and it made a pretty good seal. Insert the other end of it into your prepared water bottle. This is the Dexter DX 7.5 surge actuator. On top of the coupling, you'll see the hole where you need to insert the flat blade screwdriver. Place the tip in between the space here. Now have your friend move the screwdriver back and forth. This will pressurize the system. After a few pumps, hold the screwdriver back to keep applying pressure and loosen the top of the valve so that the fluid comes out. After using a wrench to open the valve, I was able to just use my fingers to loosen and tighten it with the hose on it. Essentially what you want to do is keep running new fluid through the system to exchange all the old stuff. You'll have to fill the reservoir a few times and make sure all the air is out of the lines. While your partner is pumping the actuator, make sure they are paying attention to the fluid level. If it gets too low, it will suck in air. If that happens, you will have to start the purging process all over again. Make sure your partner is holding the valve tight before you close the valve to prevent any backflow. You can see here that I had air bubbles coming from around the fitting. This shows that I didn't have a good seal, but a little adjustment and the bubbles went away. How does that saying go? Rinse, lather, repeat? So once we've run a bunch of fluid through the system, take the tube off and hand tighten with a wrench. Now that one side's done, don't forget to do the other side. As you finish up, make sure you top off the reservoir, close it up and wipe off any spilled fluid as it is corrosive to metal. All right, everyone, the trailer is set and ready to hit the water. If you guys like this video, give a thumbs up, leave a comment down below if there's anything else that you want to see, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, everyone, and I'll see you all on the water.